Hello and welcome to Untwisted Threads. 2023 has been the biggest knitting year for me so far. I started knitting in 2020, but didn't get into knitting my first sweater until August of 2021, then I started designing in the fall of 2022, and this year feels like a combination of the first two years all in one. So in today's video, I'm so excited to reflect on the projects that I completed throughout the year of 2023. I will say a lot of these projects are my own designs, but I did knit a few things from other designers too. As an overview, I'll be sharing about 14 knitted items and a few smaller items as well. I decided to organize and go through my projects into categories as I go through them all. Now I'm not trying to bore you with a long intro, so all of the patterns and yarns used will be listed in the description if they're available, and let's get started. So this year, I completed a total of 9 sweaters and 1 cardigan, some of which I knitted 2 or even 3 times, because that's what happens sometimes when you're designing knitwear. The first sweater is the Mona Lisa sweater by Knittles Creations. It is a sweater that suggests fingering weight yarn and is knitted bottom up on the body and sleeves. It features all over lace on the front and back of the body and a row of lace going down the sleeve. I chose three skeins of Cascade Heritage in the color Pumpkin Spice, and I honestly couldn't be more obsessed with my color choice. With it being so lightweight, this has been one of my most reached for sweaters because I don't get too warm in it when I'm wearing it, but it does still keep me warm even with the lace pattern. Since this was really my first lace knitting project, I didn't want to get overwhelmed with the lace pattern, so I decided not to knit the lace on the back and just knitted it in stockinette. It was a fun project and pattern to knit. Because this yarn is super wash, I didn't really know how long the sleeves were going to grow when I blocked it, so I had to do a little bit of sleeve surgery detaching the cuff and reattaching it to shorten it a little bit. I also added a strand of thin elastic in the neckband so it kept its shape for a little bit longer. The next sweater I finished was my third knitting pattern design called the Annabelle sweater. It was my first top down and round yoke design and features baubles and a pearl bump stripe. I knit this one in a DK weight yarn in a light gray color. Now this was one of those instances where I didn't know if I would like the yarn or not and bought an entire sweater quantity of it anyway and it ended up being too rustic for my skin. I'm not going to say the name of the yarn yet because I want to do a review of it for you to give you my full opinion on it, but a few months later I did end up repurposing the yarn from this sweater to design something else. When designing this one, I wanted kind of a simple round yoke design but with a little bit of fun with the baubles. I think in my head I can see it as being a fun festive sweater for the holidays and a cream or even a classic red or green. The first and only cardigan I completed this year was my Leela cardigan. I actually had never knitted a cardigan before, so designing and writing this pattern was a fun learning curve. It is knit using an undyed DK weight merino yarn called Hawthorne DK from Knit Picks. It is knitted flat from the bottom up and features a super squishy half fisherman's rib stitch and cables on the front and back. This knitted up really quick for me as the stitch really grows with blocking so you don't have to knit as long or use as much yarn for this one, which I thought was really cool and engaging to knit. I wanted it to have a fairly high neckline as I envisioned this cardigan being worn button up on its own or over top of a shirt or dress too. The third sweater is the Rosary Jumper by Janelle of Rosary Apparel. It is a vintage printed pattern that she was able to reformat and offer as a free pattern on her website. For the yarn, I chose Concept by Katia Cotton Yak in the colorway ochre. The pattern has each piece knitted in panels, but I really didn't want to knit a paneled sweater, so I made a few simple modifications. Thanks to Pinterest, I discovered that the stitch design is called the Crest of the Wave Stitch, so I was able to figure out with the gauge how many pattern repeats I needed in the round to create the finished bust size that I was wanting to achieve. So I basically eliminated the edge stitches that each panel section it has and was able to knit it in the round from the bottom up. 
This pattern is also not size inclusive, but if you're wanting to knit this sweater too, but in a larger size, you could just figure out how many stitch pattern repeats you would need for your desired finished garment size. The sleeves also don't have any decreases, so that makes knitting the sleeves in the round that much easier too. The fourth sweater is another one of my designs called the Molly Sweater. It uses a fingering weight yarn and features an all over bubble texture stitch pattern. The bubbles remind me of a tiny little molly fish, so that's where the name came from. It is knit from the bottom up and the sleeves are knit in the round from the sleeve holes down. I used a cotton merino yarn that I was also not impressed with. Yes, a review for this yarn will be coming this spring. Even though it is a sweater that uses fingering weight yarn, in my opinion the stitch pattern kept it interesting and had my focus throughout knitting it. The fifth sweater is my first tee that I have knitted and a raglan design and it is called the Louisa tee. It is knitted in a DK weight yarn from the top down. The sleeves have a slight puff to them and the t-shirt overall has a moss stitch. I had so much fun thinking about and designing this sweater tee. I really love moss stitch as a texture, and even though it is in a DK weight yarn, the stitch gauge is a little bit looser, so the tee has a nice drape and isn't too heavy in my opinion. I collaborated with Jador Fibers for this design and used their Fira DK base in the colorway Caramel. I am really looking forward to making another one of these when it gets a little bit warmer for next spring or summer. So the sixth sweater this year is the Fairlight sweater and it is my first colorwork design. I am such a sucker for Fair Isle and colorwork sweaters and I wanted to create more of a simple colorwork design. It uses a DK weight yarn and I collaborated with Allie B's workshop to use her cold brew, dandelion, and blush colorways on her DK merino base for my sample. It is knitted top down and in the round before splitting for sleeves. Then the body is knit in the round before the sleeves are put back on the needles and knit down in the round too. Now I had so many different colorway ideas and options when creating this design and I've honestly had to stop myself from casting on all of them this fall. I really would love to knit a holiday colored one next year and or also a two colored version in cream and caramel. My seventh sweater this year is the sweater version of the cardigan I knitted in the spring so it's called the Leela sweater. I'm not going to repeat myself since the pattern is exactly the same as the cardigan, but it's knitted in the round. I blocked mine multiple times as I went because I wanted to make sure it was growing at exactly the length that I wanted it to before I moved on to the next section, like splitting for the front and back or starting the collar. My eighth sweater is currently in testing and it's called the Aspen sweater. The Leela cardigan and sweater really kickstarted my obsession with cables. I love cables, I love the different designs, and I love knitting them too. This sweater uses a DK weight yarn and is knit from the bottom up and in the round. For my sample, I used the yarn that I recycled from my Annabelle sweater earlier this year. The design features two different cable sizes, a braided cable in the center, and moss stitch on the sides and sleeves. It also has a 2 by one ribbing for the hem, collar, and cuffs. As I only intended on using this yarn to design and sample photos, I knit one sleeve and one slipover edge on the armhole, as this pattern has the instructions to be knit as a slipover or a sweater. I am so in love with this sweater, and my yarn has just come in to knit my real sample in the color marzipan. If you're interested in knitting this one, the pattern release is scheduled for Monday, January 15th. And the last sweater casted off my needles is another design not quite in testing yet called the Oakley sweater. It is knit using Cream Cut Soul Wool Mary Merino 140 in the colorway beige, which is a sport or light DK weight yarn. It is another raglan design, but again, having the cable knitting bug, I really wanted to add a big squishy cable detail along each raglan line. It is knit from the top down with optional short row shaping before beginning the yoke. I picked up stitches later for my collar to create a mock neck detail. 
I wasn't sure what kind of ribbing I wanted to do, but I really loved the simple one by one rib on the collar, hem, and sleeves. If you're interested in being a future test knitter, I have the tester call notification link in the description box below where you'll receive an email for any of my future tester calls. So I ended up knitting four pairs of socks this year, one pair for myself, and three gift knits. The first pair uses the free Basecamp socks pattern and is knit from the bottom up. I used some of the leftover pumpkin spice colored yarn from my lace sweater for the heels, toes, and cuffs to go with my brown hand-dyed yarn from Kim Dyes Yarn. This was actually the first skein of hand-dyed yarn I have ever gotten, so I really wanted to make sure I was certain of the project that I was making before I wound up the skein. With these socks, I have found that I really love and prefer my socks to be ribbed as they just seem to fit so well. Since I used a superwash merino, these socks are a little bit slippery to walk around in, but I love them nevertheless. The other three pairs were all using the same pattern and technique, so I'll give a little overview of them all. I used the free team socks pattern to knit these DK weight yarn socks that I knitted for Christmas gifts. All of these socks used Patton's Croy sock yarn held double to create a marled look and a DK weight gauge. My gauge was a little bit larger knitting with this yarn and the suggested needle size, so I sized down in the pattern and the socks ended up fitting perfectly. The pattern is knitted top down with a heel flap and gusset and uses an all over two by one rib. I extended the rib on the top of the socks after the heel as well. I also didn't do the recommended cuff, I just did the two by one ribbing throughout the leg of the socks for a more seamless look. Now these socks look more like siblings than an exact match of two individual socks, but I honestly love the hand knitted look to them. For the first pair, I used two strands of the colorway Brown Rose Marl. I really love the brown, purple, and pink colors. For the second pair, I used one strand of Gentry Gray and one strand of Gray Brown Marl. I didn't realize this, but even though both skeins say that they weigh 50 grams, the pattern and colorway weighed 56 grams and the solid colorway ended up weighing 51 grams. So I did run out of the solid color near the end of the second sock, but who I was gifting the socks to didn't mind me doing a little stash busting for me to finish the sock. The third pair, I used one strand of brown rose marl and one strand of muslin. This gave the socks a lighter look to the brown, purple, and pink patterning colorway. Lastly, a few little projects I completed this year were actually crochet projects. If this photo doesn't summarize enough, I do not crochet very often. Probably once a year actually because I love making ornaments around Christmas time. But first is this crochet cat witch hat. I had a little bit of DK cold brew colored yarn left over and I thought it would make a cute little hat. I held the yarn double for a worsted weight and followed a crochet pattern that I found on Etsy. Needless to say, the cats don't appreciate the hat as much as I do, but it brings me joy and that is what matters. The first ornament I made is an ice skate. I was able to find enough scraps to make this little project. I have always loved ice skating and I have fond memories of ice skating with the one who I gifted this to, so I was really happy to find this pattern and video. It starts with crocheting the boot, then the base of the skate, and finally the blade. She recommended using hot glue and felt to hold it all together, but I didn't have either of those on hand, so I improvised and used some quilt batting and hand sewed it all together. I decided against adding the laces and the suggested bow and just took a little bit of red yarn to create my own bow at the top. The next ornament is a sand dollar. My husband and I have a little tradition every Christmas to give each other an ornament of something that reminds us of our year. This year I decided it would be fun to make an ornament instead of purchasing one and I decided on this little sand dollar. Another free pattern, I was able to use the same cotton yarn that I used for the boot of the ice skate to crochet my ornament. And lastly was a holiday cat hat. 
Again, just for fun, I used a worsted weight yarn in the Colorway Farmhouse from Allie B Workshop and some leftover cream yarn for the pom-pom. This is a free pattern that I followed from a YouTube video and was actually able to have our cat try on the hat as I was making it so it would fit just right. I ended up making the top part a little bit smaller because their ears are really big and I chained a larger number to give them more room for the ear holes. And of course, I really love the pom-pom on the top. I think it just ties it all together. Well, that is all of the projects I completed this year. I hope you enjoyed hearing about all of them and maybe even found some inspiration for your next projects. Do you have a favorite project that you made last year? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.